Welcome to the Permaculture Pimp Cast, the only pimp cast on planet Earth where we discuss permaculture, preparedness, and practical living. Well, it's one of those bonus episodes, and we're going to do an interview that, honestly, I've been wanting to do for some time. I'll get into that in a moment. But first, this episode brought to you by Hickory Ridge Soap from TwoOldCrowsHomestead.com. Turn that simp into a pimp. Bam! Also, EMP Shield, 50 bucks off with promo code PERMA. Don't forget about that new micro. That thing is the cat's meow, especially for your ATVs and stuff like that. We got a new sponsor out there, Heaven's Harvest, 10% off once again with that promo code PERMA. Um, look, y'all, I don't need to tell anybody out there about the nature of the world we live in, what's going on, what the problems are, and how crazy it's becoming. Well, First and foremost, grow your food. Also get storable food. But hey, if you want some of that freeze-dried stuff, bam. Water filters, bam. You got it all right there at Heaven's Harvest, 10% off. And don't forget about Harvest Right. All right, you can also check us out on the Fountain app where you can triple your speed if you like. And you can also tip a pimp where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, y'all. Um in fact, if you're watching on YouTube, you ought to see this wonderful looking sign I'm looking at right now. And once again, permaculture is my passion, so nobody get offended out there. All right, y'all, without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. Now, I've been interviewing people, whether it was on terrestrial radio or whether it's in this podcast realm for quite some time. But I got to say, this is very, very different in so many different ways. So far, you've heard me talk to a wide number of people, whether it was in the realm of the cryptids or whether we're talking about Mount Graham, we're talking about preparedness. We're going to talk about something different today, but the biggest thing I really want to point out is what these two young men are doing. All right, without further ado, Bryce and Blaine, how y'all doing? Good, good. How are you? We're doing I'm good. good. I'm good. You know, just right off the bat, man, if I were to tell somebody, hey, I'm going to go get Bryce and Blaine, dude. You guys sound like a gang, like you're about to put somebody through a five-minute flurry of fist. So uh, <laughs> hopefully hopefully you ain't those guys. Let's hear a little bit about yourselves. I mean, how old are you guys? And, um, folks, you're going to want to stick around for this interview because what these guys are doing is astonishing. So let's start with you, Bryce. Tell us a little bit about your background, and then we'll move on into Blaine. So uh, right now I'm 20 years old. I'll be 21 in August. Um, basically what got us into all the stuff that we do now, uh, we started off in 4-H, shot 4-H for quite a few years and basically took that from 4-H to CMP, CMP to American Marksman. Uh, American Marksman was a televised shooting competition that both of us competed in. Uh, I only, I was the only one out of us that made it to the national event. Um, from that, we went to USPSA, tried some three gun, uh, but really stuck with USPSA and USPSA kind of got us in this machining world that we're in now. Now you guys are both, let's start off. Um, let's just kind of, before we get into what you're actually doing right now, I just want to give the audience a little bit of background on what you're doing. Um, so basically, for the for those that don't know, because you used a few acronyms there, basically you guys are competition shooters. Correct. Yes. Yes. Now both of you are right. Yes. Yes. All right. So, okay, is, uh, <laughs> Blaine, is your story any different? Or uh, I mean, you know, pretty similar. Uh, we have our other things that we like, uh, small hobbies, but pretty much uh, we both shoot competitively, and uh, we're both machinists. Uh, We've been machining for the same amount of time, two and a half years now. Uh, our business is just under a year old. So we'll get it. We'll get into that in a minute. But I want to know, first of all, about, okay, your background. You said you started in 4-H. I mean, I guess you guys, there's a couple of things I'm going to, we'll get into your business. But one thing I want to point out there, there's a number of people, all ages that are getting into whether homestead space or starting up businesses like you guys and any number of things, but most of them seem to think that they have to go off to college and go get a degree in worthlessness. Why are you guys different? Why do you, is that an option for you? Is that something you guys are wanting to do or are you just straight out of high school, getting straight into it? Straight out of high school, straight getting into, school. um, we had an opportunity to, uh, 
do an apprenticeship at a machine shop down the road from us and they taught us so much they uh we we didn't see a point in going to school to learn basically what we already learned in a year uh there was a one of the guys that told us there he said uh one year here is gonna teach you more than you'll learn in four years of college so we were like straight up we wanted to take that opportunity and run with it that's so awesome because i could say you know as a person on my end of it i got a military education a trade education college education and a farm education and the one thing that has never put a dime in my pocket is that so-called associates and bachelor's degree that was supposed to make me money but it didn't and it doesn't um in you guys cases everybody okay did you guys go to regular high school or anything like that you're i'm sorry we were homeschool. Uh, okay, now the kids you know around there, which you know, I'm, I imagine that's why you guys are so doggone intelligent. Is why you is because you were homeschooled. Now, clearly, you got to know kids in the community. Now, from what they, from the background they come from, are they thinking that they have to go to college to live the American dream, or what's what's your assessment of all this? I would say the majority of them, yes. Um, we have a couple friends that uh, are kind of paving their own path. Uh, not going the college route, but I would say definitely the majority of our friends are going to college uh, right now. At our age, they're in school. Now, where do you think they got that from? Is that coming from mom and dad, the guidance counselors? I mean, with the conversations you guys have with your friends, I mean, why do they think that is the number one road to success? I would say it's probably a bit of both. Okay. It's probably parents telling them, hey, you need to get a college education, blah, 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 blah. Their guidance counselor, counselors tell them this is the only way you're going to make decent money in your life uh, to make a good living for yourself. And Yeah, meanwhile, you're going into college, you're getting a, spending a pile of money on debt, you know, for a degree that you're probably, you know, I, I'd like to know what career you hope to get with a music education degree for the most part. And that's, that's the kind of degrees that most of them are going after. Yeah, now, the ones you do know... I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say really the only reason to go to uh, college is if you're gonna be a lawyer or something in the medical field. I mean, anything else, kind of pointless. So, I will. I mean, like I said, with those four modalities of education, I can honestly say, and I've been saying for the longest time, that the number one best way to get in a career is apprenticeship. Now, um, how do you guys? What describe to me what that apprenticeship was like for you guys? So we, uh, we, what we first ended up doing, we had a friend that was in the machinist world and he was going to teach us, but we were going to, it would have entailed on us driving four hours to, uh, West Monroe, Louisiana, uh, basically every other week, staying there for a couple of days and learning from him. And then we found out about this machine shop down the road from us. And he's a, a bigger machine shop at that point. And he was making all kinds of more complicated parts and higher to or tighter tolerances, I should say. Um, it just made our lives a lot easier. It was only like a, I think it's six minute drive for us from the house to this other machine shop. And like we worked there for free for seven months. So all it cost us was food and fuel to go there. Yeah. He, uh, okay. after the seven months, he, uh, he actually offered us a job there. I mean, he knew, he told us we, uh, we're learning at a higher rate than, um, most of his employees that he's had there. So that was a very, uh, definitely a confidence booster for us. It was, uh, I, I think it was his first homeschool, uh, employees, I guess you would say. Man, I am so doggone impressed because your, your story to a certain extent, you guys are figuring out much earlier and it might be because you have wonderful parents too. And. For full disclosure, y'all, I know their dad, and he's been a real blessing in my life. He's a good friend. And uh, when I found out what these boys were doing, I'm like, there is no way I'm not getting them on this show. Um, back to the apprenticeship thing. Um, one apprenticeship I play, I paid for when I became a journeyman electrician, you know, that was five years of me doing schoolwork and at the same time doing on-the-job training, both simultaneously. And I had to pay for that, but it, in comparison to college, it might have been – the cost of maybe two classes of what a college class would cost. So maybe under a thousand dollars, I became a journeyman electrician. That's about what I paid for it. And the other apprenticeship I did was very similar to the ones you have. And that was in the butcher's trade. 
where I did almost exactly the same thing. Now, I'm not saying this for the benefit of you guys necessarily, but I'm saying it for all the people out there and those that have young kids and they're trying to figure out what it is they need to do. Well, like these guys, I basically went down to the butcher shop. I couldn't get in at the time because every single hipster wanted to be a butcher at the time. And so they weren't going to let an old timer like me in. Well, I told them just like these guys did. I said, hey, I'm going to come in. I'm going to work for free. And they still didn't call me back because they thought, well, what kind of lunatic would want to work for free? <laughs> and I, I'll tell you my I'll, I'll tell you my story and we'll see how it overlays with yours. I was, first of all, sick and tired of getting back somebody else's animals when I brought them in. So number one, there's reason number one. And number two, I want to learn from the very best. And these guys were extraordinary. So when they finally did give me a call, I go in there and I outwork all of the people that were actually being paid. And then next thing you know, they're wanting to bring me on full time. Next thing you know, they're calling me every single time they have something for me to do or something new to learn. Next thing you know, I know this craft better than just about everybody else in there because my heart was in it and this was something I wanted to do. And you know what? That trade is, I mean, I don't, I, I haven't counted the money on it, but that trade alone has given me, if I wanted to pursue it exclusively, I could make a fortune doing it, especially nowadays. But it's funny how my story, and this one I had to learn much later in life than you guys did, my story echoes exactly the same thing that you guys have. So all you folks out there that are thinking whether or not like, oh, gee, man, I'm kind of I'm here's where I am. I got to spend all this money. You guys are telling me that for the cost of gas money and a little bit of time, you guys now have a legitimate trade. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you said it was about six miles or six minutes down the road. So how long did you do this? I think you already covered that, but I want to. I want to kind of give people a, a, a scope of understanding here. How long were you doing this trade before you guys thought, okay, I think I, I think I feel pretty good about this and I want to try my own thing. How long were you at it? About a year or it was like, I think it was right at 11 months, right? 11 months. Yes, sir. Huh. Same time I was doing the butchery thing. So it's exactly the same thing. I felt pretty competent within six months. How long before you guys didn't feel like pigs on roller skates? Um, uh, probably about a month. Uh, the first day we learned a lot about, uh, the different tools we use, but I would say it was a month before we really settled in and felt comfortable with the trade. Now, man, this is just jaw dropping. I mean, in so many different ways here you are, you guys are just barely, I mean, well, Blaine, are you still in school? Are you still in high school? Or I guess you guys were never in. Well, let me say that you, you guys were never in indoctrination training in the classic uh, sense so, are you uh, still technically being homeschooled uh we went to public school till i was third in third grade and he was in uh, fifth, grade. fifth grade but really all we really remember uh school wise has been homeschool uh, i remember our first uh week of homeschool and we were learning far beyond what we learned in public school it was a completely different animal uh it it was, I would say it was almost overwhelming at first, but once we followed into it, we, we learned, we brought in so much more knowledge. It was very beneficial for us. We we're, were very blessed to have that opportunity. Well, it sounds like you guys were trained to be autodidacts, um, which is basically a self-taught person. Um, in the, in the text, in the text right. I get with your dad, I realize he's one, I'm one, my son's one. So it sounds like, you know, you guys are being raised up to be Anchors of your own. It, it certainly seems that way. So, man, it's, it's a real joy to talk to you guys about this sort of thing. So let's talk about, describe, because a number of people about your age or maybe younger or maybe even older, maybe considerably older, are wondering how you made that transition from being an apprentice to, I don't know if you guys are comfortable enough to call yourselves journeymen, but at what point did, through, down this road did you think, okay, there might be a business here for me? Uh, I would say it was about probably two months before we uh, made the switch. I would say we, we were looking into it. We kind of making a decision uh, along that line, I would say. Like once we started putting the thought of, hey, we might look into doing the business here and there. And it was like, all right finally a switch came to us you're like let's do this let's go all in if we don't and 
we end up not progressing in this, then we're losing an opportunity that we could have had earlier on. Correct. Wow. Let's kick it off then. Let's talk about your business. Um, I want you to tell everybody, and and then I want to back up. We'll we'll talk about your homeschooling here in a little while, but I want to talk about your business next. Um, and you know, how did you kick it off? What? How did you start? Um, let's just start from the very very beginning at the ground level. So you decide, okay, this is a business we want to get into. What was the next thing you did after you made the decision you were going to do this? We had to find a, a we had to find a place to put it. Luckily, we, uh, we were very blessed to have a place down the road from us. Uh, to be able to put the building in. Um, it's only a mile away from our house. Yeah, correct. Uh, and then next thing we knew, we had to find the machine. Uh, we were already previously looking about a month in, we, uh, but we found a uh, proper machine we wanted for uh, to do the jobs that we want um, to do. Uh, that's pretty much the steps for it. We had to uh, go through all the steps of being becoming a business, uh, we had to find the right accountant, all the things new business owners had to go through. Now, did you guys have to figure this uh, from the ground up, or did you seek help from mom and dad or people mom, in the community? Mom and dad helped us a pretty good bit. Oh, wow. Definitely our uh, biggest benefactors. They they helped us the most. Yes, they they helped us a lot. And the the great thing is, is like they could kind of once once it kind of kicked itself off they could kind of throw us to the wolves a little bit and let us learn what like by failing. Cause that's the only way you're actually going to get it ingrained into yourself. If you just watch them do it and just follow the steps that they say to do, you're not going to learn until you make a mistake. I love the way you boys roll. One of our mottos here is we fail while daring greatly. So that's, you know, that that's one of the things you got to do in order to progress. So, okay, so you decided you're going to do a business. You seek help from mom and dad. They allow you to fall on your face when needed to because, like you said, it's the best way to learn. Um, so you got a building. You find, was it hard to find material as far as a, um, a uh, well, I'm not sure what you're using exactly or what that, why don't you describe to me what the first thing was you had to purchase in order to get into business? So we had to, we had to buy a mill. And we had to get three-phase power to the building. Um, it was pretty difficult for us to find a breaker box for mm. three for a while, and then we found one that was refurbished. Uh, cost a pretty good penny too. Um, that was mainly because everything was very, very hard to find. It's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's still hard to find uh, okay. three-phase power uh, components anywhere. And we had to get basically all the wiring for the inside of the shop, uh, put new lights inside the shop because the old lights were just straight up. Uh, they all, burned. They're, all the light bulbs were burnt out. We had to put new light fixtures in too because we wanted to run LED lights instead of fluorescent so we don't have to burn so much electricity. Uh, get basically all the measuring tools that we needed. Um, Vices. vices, all the clamping sort sort of stuff to hold the vices to the table. So. Wow. Okay, so you got your basic stuff off and running. Okay, so then what did you decide that you guys were going to start machining right out? Of, okay, so you got to, just so everybody can follow along here, you made the decision. You acquired the material you needed. You got a building, ended up getting some three phase, which is easier finding bin Laden today than, uh, than it is to find, you know, three phase, um, components. Ask me how I know I am a journeyman electrician. So, um, some of these things are difficult to find depending on what it is you're looking for. But, um, so you got this thing, you're off and running. Now, what did you decide on what you were going to make? I mean, you got a, you got the stuff you need. So what was the next part of this progression? Uh, we were, we were blessed with a um with work right away. We had uh, some people that we knew that um, needed some parts made. Uh, as of right now, we're I would say we uh, specialize in making um, batches uh, aluminum parts in batches of fifty to two hundred uh, at a time. Uh, most of our stuff is aluminum. We're kind of falling into steel and uh, stainless steel at the moment. 
Uh, that's as far as we ventured. We haven't really cut any titanium or anything like that yet. Now, is that is your material hard to find these days? Uh, depending on the size, yes, sir. Uh, some sizes are harder to find than others. Uh, stainless, trying to find a, um, a good steel, uh, a place to get steels, uh, pretty difficult. Aluminum's a little easier to find, it seems to be. Wow. So, okay. So you get, you got business right off the bat. Now, if you got any, if you're like any other business, clearly you want more of it. What is it? Can you, what can you do? Because there's a number of people out here that's going to be listening to this. Um, what can you do for the person out there that's thinking they might need machine work? What can you do and what maybe can't you do that you're not quite ready for? Um, currently, uh, the only thing limited us now is, uh, I would say, uh, machine wise, we've learned, uh, everything there is to know about three axis machining, um, milling, uh, we make, we have made some five axis parts with a three axis machine. It's depending on how you fixture the part, you have to make special fixtures to be able to hold it on different angles and stuff to be able to make those. Uh, you could grab that. Oh, this one right here. This would be, uh, I would. I would say a five axis part because of the different angles of the holes. You can see it's a clock. The block on the top is kind of clocked over. So you're not able to machine this without having di multiple different fixtures. This is a, I want to say a four operation part. Um, this is one of the prototypes we had of one of our products that we sell on our website. Um, but that's our, um, I, I would say that's what we specialize with. So would people send in like uh, drawings and then you guys can build them the specs? Correct. Um, most of our parts now, uh, people send us the CAD model. We'll program the, uh, the CAD model. Uh, we've made 3D models of certain parts for people. Um, but most of the time, it's usually they'll send us a CAD model. How long have you guys been in business now? Uh, it's really been... I think it's March is when we became an official corporation. <laughs> um, but we've started manufacturing. I would say we started manufacturing parts about a month later. Yeah. Because we couldn't get the uh, the box in. It took us a month. I think it's April, box June. Hour. Like end of April, beginning of June is when we started making parts. Now, what are the people around you thinking? Um, I mean, like people your age, your friends, or maybe just kids. In the, not kids. You guys are men. Um, other people your age in the community, what are they thinking about this business? They're honestly, the yeah, reasons I'm friends, asking. Yeah, they've been pretty surprised. Uh, a lot of the guys we'll go fishing with, uh, they they're very surprised as to what we're doing. Um, I mean, it it seems like uh, a year prior to that, we would, we were at fishing, thinking, oh, what are we gonna do with our lives? Deciding is this really the route we want to go in? And now we have a machine in there. They, uh, all our friends have been super supportive. They come hang out at the shop while we're making parts. Uh, they, uh, a lot of them have been like, hey, uh, when are y'all hiring? Asking us if yeah. they can get a job from us. Super really? Mm -hmm. Well, man, that's you clearly have made good friends, man. Any haters in the bunch so far? No, sir. No, sir. Wow. Okay, well, that's extraordinary. Don't worry. As you guys become more and more popular, just – just keep in mind there's going to be those detractors out there. And, you, of course, you know, that those are the ones you don't listen to. Exactly. Well, you guys have done a better job of making friends than I ever did growing up. <laughs> Our friend groups have always been small. We've only ever had, like, we didn't keep in touch with any friends besides, like, one or two from school. And then we made one good friend in 4-H. And then we have another good friend in – uh, the United States Practical Shooting Association, and now that, that's about it. All the rest of our uh, friends, and friends are adults. Yeah, like within between their mid thirties and late fifties. Wow. So that's why you guys are so intelligent. Okay. Yeah, you know, like the Bible says, "He that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed." So, um, yeah, you guys are definitely setting up some pretty good fruit here. So where do you, okay, so that's what you can machine right now. Are there, are there, where are you looking to go? Are you looking to get more business right now? Are you already swamped and you can't really handle much more? Uh, are there other always, enterprises within the machine world you're looking to do? We're always looking to have more jobs. Like <clears throat> right now we're keeping pretty decently busy, 
but we're looking to make it where we can't leave the shop for 16 hours. Like if we want to work 16 hour days, we're young. We still have the opportunity. Exactly. We're young. We have the opportunity to do that. So why not do it and like tackle it while we're running? Well, I got news for you, bro. When you're a business owner, those 16 hour days happen even when you're 51 years old, like I am. So <laughs> I don't, all I mean, but you don't... Worked, all week I've worked probably 12 hour days, not necessarily in the shop, but on the computer as well. Yeah, that's the, you know, that's the thing is that if you're working, if you're doing the work you love, it doesn't, what looks like work to everybody else is really just fun to you. So, it so is. let me ask you after you guys have done this, okay, so you went into the plunge or in business, each of you, do you like it? Is it something you want to keep doing? Is this where you feel like the Lord has led your life? I mean, how do you feel about it? Yes, yeah, so we feel like this is definitely what we would like to continue to do for the rest of our lives. Uh, the Lord blessed us with all the stuff that we needed for it um, without much, like, I guess, tasking ability to do so. Like you said, the only thing that was hard to find, really, we, we were very blessed at the time being uh, the box, like we were talking about with the three phase, it was the last one they had in stock and they weren't supposed to get another one for like the next few months. So we felt like that would, those little signs were... Uh, Thanks from God, basically saying this is this is a way to this is where you need to go. Wow, man, this is so doggone awesome. Okay, we'll come back to you first. We'll hit it a couple of times, but how can people contact you if they want to commission you for work or anything like that? What's the best way to, for them to get a hold of you? Uh, we have a website. Uh, it's B and D Machine Inc. Or Inc. Dot com, uh, and then we also have uh, email bnb machine four at gmail.com four as in the number four okay we'll make sure we link all that down below um we'll come back and we'll hit that again for the people later in the audience now i want to back up just a little bit because we kind of jumped into it maybe a little faster than here's here's what here's why you guys are such a blessing on so many different levels I don't know, maybe within the circle of friends you have or the people you see, but I, I, I meet a lot of people doing this work. And there's a whole lot of people, I mean, adults, young people, you name it, grasping, trying to figure out what it is they want to do with their lives. And it's astonishing that early on that you guys have figured this out and you're like, okay, I know what direction I'm in. I want to keep going. I love what I'm doing and I want to drive on. But that's not that's not usual. Um, what advice would you have for anybody out there who's, let's say, it's, well, let's start with your own age. In fact, it may apply to everybody. So let's just say it's a kid that's in the classical school setting. They have no direction for their lives. Let's say it's a kid just like me, where they came from a lousy home. Mom and dad aren't so wonderful, really don't have a whole lot of direction in their lives what would you advise these people to do? Let's say coming straight out of high school and they're trying to figure out what it is they want to do. Can you give any of those people? Because we have, I hear from them all the time, a lot of them in college right now, and they're using us, believe it or not. I'm surprised they didn't get kicked out of college for using us, but uh, they're using us for some of their projects in college. And they're not sure that this is the path they want to go on. Is there any advice, any direction you would lead these people? Uh, I would say, to go towards things that you show interest in, try them out for a while. And if they purely don't bring you any joy, you don't like learning about this specific trade or whatever you're doing, then try something else. And that's about it. Like I would, yeah, I would definitely pay attention to something that you're good at, that you enjoy. I, if you're not enjoying it and you're going there and you're dreading working every day, then that's I don't, that's not the that's a miserable life to live in. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And I can tell you that from experience. I mean, you know, it's been a fair piece of my life doing things I didn't want to do until, yeah, like you guys. I mean, it's just a joy to see guys. <laughs> you have no idea how how much of a blessing this is, even for me, because here you are. If I had it to do over again, I wouldn't change anything because it means I wouldn't be where I am now. But for everybody else that's coming up and they're thinking, okay, the high school guidance counselor told me I got to go to college or I'm going to be a loser. Same thing they told me. Or 
if you can't do that, you got to do this. You got to do that. And you guys are, you guys are grabbing what should be the American dream by its throat and you're acquiring it for yourself. And apparently you don't have a problem with hard work because you wouldn't be up there doing what you're doing right now. Exactly. Wow. So, um, Let's see here. I want to, I want to point out, I want to ask also regarding this homeschool journey. Now, most kids are going to get up depending on where they're from. They're going to get on the school bus. They're going to go to school. They're going to get their indoctrination for six hours or eight hours, whatever it is these days. They're going to get off that bus, get home, watch TV, and uh, probably get up the next day and repeat it all over again. Now, what did the life of a homeschooler look like? <laughs> For you guys, I mean, I'm guessing you weren't sitting in front of the TV all day. No, no, sir. So we basically, we still were held accountable to a structure like a regular school would have. Uh, Get up, do your schoolwork. We never started schoolwork later than 8 o'clock. We started on schoolwork, worked on school. Some days it'd be 30 minutes worth of school. Other days it'd be three or four hours. But most of the time, it would not exceed about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Because we were like, if we get our schoolwork done, we basically are rewarded throughout the rest of the day. With Basically, it would be our recess. Our recess was as soon as you get your schoolwork done, you get to go. Now, if it would be longer hours, some days we have to uh, do enough school, go eat lunch, come back, get it done. Uh, but for the majority of the times, it was, I would say it would be two, three-hour days. Mm-hmm. Okay, now the more important question. Now, you're doing what you had to do to do what you want to do. So what did you typically do on your, quote, recess? We would what would go, a typical day look like after you were done your schoolwork, I guess is what I'm asking. Well, so if we didn't have to go out and help Dad, like during that time, Dad was starting to put fence up around the whole property. If we didn't have to go help Dad uh, work on the fence – we would go fishing or plank our BB guns out in the yard at that time. Or we'd take a 22 and go shoot turtles out in the hang pond. So we'd bring slingshots and go shoot it. And we'd just piddle around, have fun. Yeah, that was our recess. So how cool is this? So you're spending anywhere between 30 minutes to four hours, depending on the day and depending on the work. And then you spend the rest of the day learning in nature, which is another classroom. I guess you guys were really just learning in another reality. Yeah. You never stop learning ever. Wow. How much time did you guys spend on the computer playing around? When, so some days we would want to play video games and stuff. We would play for a couple hours, but we never really like would sit and play video games for an entire day. We wouldn't wake up, get on a video game at nine o'clock in the morning and play till 10, 12 o'clock at night. Never. Um, there's some people that make money doing that stuff. We don't make money doing it. If, that some of our friends, we just do it to hang out with some of our friends that we have in other states. Yeah. Wow. Good night. So where do you guys see yourselves five years from now? Um, we see ourselves working basically pushing forward to expand what we have not just one like not just one or two three machines like expanding to turn what we have now into an empire not just a little house now what do you intend to do with the uh, proceeds save it and create generational wealth yeah okay clearly you're homeschooled uh <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's exactly great answer. Exactly what I'd expect to hear from intelligent people. Whereas most guys I know, the guys I used to work with in my, and when I was still out doing electric work, if you would ask any of those guys the same thing, and I'm, I know I'm casting the net a little wide here, almost universally, it would have been go buy myself a brand new truck, or it would be, I could keep myself in a new truck the rest of my life. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a new truck, but I love your answer on that. I mean, everybody needs some utility to get around. Right. Um, but man, how cool is that? Build generational wealth. All right, y'all. There's a whole lot to be learned from the mouth of babes. Ah, stay, I stand corrected from the mouth of men. Um, autodidacts. 
um, extraordinary, extraordinary people. So um, I want to, I want to hit one more thing before we get out of here. Um, your, as far as your machining work goes, um, is there anything that you are not equipped to do at the present moment? Somebody said, Hey, I need some really big ball bearings. Could you make those? Uh, we don't have a lathe at the moment or a switch okay. machine, but currently we specialize in three axis milling. Uh, in the future, we like to go forward to making uh, lathe parts and uh, using Swiss machines. Swiss machines, uh, you don't know what they are. Uh, they're similar to lathes. They just basically have more active tools at the same time. They're able to do multiple tasks at the same time, uh, making things like air fittings or any small parts like that, sometimes large. But Do you guys do any uh, 3D printing or anything like that? I mean, is this have, is there, is there a way to overlay any of that? We do have a 3D printer. Uh, as of right now, we only use the 3D printer for uh, making prototype parts and stuff like that, proof of concepts make sure the angles line up before we use an expensive piece of metal to get an angle right mm. or something of that sort. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. All right, y'all one more time. So everybody can find, can see where they can find you. Where, where can they, um, do you guys have a social media presence at all? We do have a social media presence. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. It's B and B machine incorporated Inc. Um, and then we also have, and Instagram, Instagram is bnb underscore machine. And our email is bnb machine four, the number four at gmail.com. And our website is bnb machine inc.com. Okay. And I understand your website. You're probably in the process of just kind of getting that off and running. Yes. Sir. Okay. So the best way is for them to reach out to you and uh, find out what it is. Hey, hey, y'all. What I wanted you to see in this interview, number one, if you need any machine work, definitely hit these guys up. If they can't do it, maybe they can direct you to somebody that can. Additionally, I want everybody out there, I get asked this all the time, and it's coming from kids, it's coming from junior high. Well, actually, when I say kids, I'm talking like junior high level, high school, college, and they're asking how to make this transition into a career that they love. And a lot of times they're asking about farming. It doesn't have to be just that. And you don't have to go and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a degree on worthlessness. Thank God for the Army College Fund and the GI Bill because I got through college for free. And also my apprenticeship. It was paid for that, paid for by that. Um, I want you to know that you don't have to follow the advice of people who are programming to programming you to be another cog in the wheel. You can do like these guys, like Bryce and Blaine, go out there and do extraordinary things. Go after Moby Dick in a rowboat and take the tartar sauce with you. You can go out here and do all this stuff and do astonishing things and encourage your kids to. And uh, is there anything you want to leave these guys with? Uh, I would just say don't get yourself to where you feel stuck. Yeah. Get into something that you enjoy and do it like it actually matters. That's Bro, you it. just did it all right there, man. You honestly did. Yeah. If you do it like it matters, if this is a business that you care about or a career that you want to do, yes, do it like it matters. And like the whole world depends on it. And also do it for the glory of God. All right, y'all. I want to thank you so much for checking us out. I want to thank Bryce and Blaine. And remember, go check them out, y'all. We got the stuff down below. Until next time, this is Billy. Stay alert, stay alive.